Are you tired of putting yourself last? Of taking care of everybody else's needs and powering through to meet the next set of impossible standards? In our fast-paced society, we lose touch with our intrinsic worth, with the ability to value ourselves for who we are right now. Instead of living life exhausted, frustrated, and disconnected from your authentic self, maybe it's time to put yourself back in the life you've worked so hard to create. Join radio host and life choreographer Laura Cheadle and learn how to build your dreams and live your sparkle using the five steps of flaunt. Find your fetish, laugh out loud, accept unconditionally, navigate the negative, and trust in your truth. Hello, welcome to Flaunt. Build your dreams and live your sparkle. I'm Laura Cheadle, and before we go any further, I want to remind you to get your free copy of 15 Ways to Flaunt Today. How can you do that? You can do that by going to my website, Laura Cheadle, L-O-R-A-C-H-E-A-D-L-E dot com and signing up for my newsletter. Now, not only do you get this amazing ebook, 15 Ways to Flaunt Today, but you also get an email sequence. Now, the email sequence is not just your average everyday email sequence that's kind of boring. Oh, no, 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 no. My email sequence breaks down the five steps of flaunt and gives you one activity to do every day. So if you print those emails and save them, you've got yourself a little workbook that you can use to make yourself feel better whenever there's something going on in your life that gets you down. As a reminder, flaunt is an acronym and it stands for F, find your fetish, L, laugh out loud, A, U, accept unconditionally, N, navigate the negative, and T, trust in your truth. I have got a super fun, sparkly guest today on the show that I cannot wait to introduce you to. Her name is Marta Spurk, and she's a writer, a podcaster, and a woman's empowerment coach, which as you know, is really my thing. Um, her focus, it's a little bit different than mine. Her focus is teaching women how to increase their self-esteem and improve their self-image by going on a deep dive and doing the inner work of personal development. Through her podcast, The Empowered Woman, her virtual self-improvement school, and in-person workshops, she hopes to encourage and uplift women to step into their own power and realize that they can do it all. Which, oh my gosh, if you're anything like me, who doesn't want to do it all? So welcome to the show, Marta. Thank you so much, Laura. I'm so excited to chat with you today. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. Now, you have a really interesting background. And yes. yeah, I would just love for you to share with the listeners a little bit about your background because it's definitely unique. Yes. Yeah, so I'm originally from Brazil. And from a young age, I was very obsessed with English and uh, the American culture. And that is actually my official career path. I've been teaching English and translating and interpreting since I was 14. And that's how I met my husband too. My American husband was in church in a conference in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And that's how I ended up in the US. <laughs> we got married 10 years ago. And another interesting fact is that we had triplets in 2016. So that was a huge surprise and also a huge turning point for me in my life that helped me find my purpose and my passion more uh, because it was just such a big change. Um, we actually had the babies in Brazil. We were living there at the time and we decided to make a move when they were nine months old. So that was huge and I ended up, you know, having to raise them with very little support from family uh, and having to lean on myself. And that's how all of this empowerment and the coaching came about. <laughs> Oh, uh, that would be challenging. I mean, one baby was enough and then <laughs> babies 22 months later was enough, but three yeah. at a time, that, that is a lot. Yeah, it's intense. <laughs> yeah. So you talk about encouraging and uplifting women to realize that they can do it all. Talk a little bit more about that. Yeah. So when I first started my coaching, it was very focused on moms because it was the moment I was living in postpartum and wanting to find myself. And I was even calling my podcast and my business at the time, mom does it all. And my idea behind that was that you don't have to be just a mom, which just not meaning that that's <laughs> negative, you know, right, right. but I felt the desire within me to do more and to help other women that may 
that may have been feeling lonely or isolated because of motherhood and because this is how I felt. And I felt the need deep within to find that strength within me instead of having to lean on other people or just assuming that that was life for me, that, you know, I, I had to wait until my kids were 18 to find myself. And I realized that motherhood was actually the opportunity for me to find myself because I now had the responsibility of imparting something to three human beings. And yeah. I had to, I had to find what that was. And also realizing a lot of it because of triplets made me realize that I had lost control and that you can't control people. You can't control your kids as much as you want to. Um, and especially thinking about the idea of them going off into the world later on, I can't be with them all the time. And you can't be with anybody all the time except yourself. So right. what you do with yourself is very, very important. And that's what the do it all comes about is understanding really your purpose. And if you have this desire burning in your heart to do something, then it's there for a reason. And you should lean into it and follow it. Even if you're a mom and nothing can stop you. But at the same time, um, lots of women started resonating with this message that weren't moms. So that's why I decided to just, you know, call it woman empowerment, uh, because I didn't want to label women as moms either. That's just a part of who we are. It's a beautiful part. It's a huge part because it changes everything, but it's not all of it. And this is what I'm encouraging, finding all the pieces of you, not just motherhood. I love that. And you're right. I think motherhood brings that up because suddenly I, I really appreciate how you said you lose control because yeah. with kids, you do, you lose control of your ability to sleep, to yeah. find stress, to eat, to have your own time because you really, really are at the mercy of your babies. Yeah. And e even though it's fulfilling and it's wonderful and all that, it's also not wonderful because it's really <laughs> difficult. Yes can't control it. Yeah. I love that you said not wonderful because when I first started saying these things, I had some people that didn't really understand and didn't agree with what I was saying, uh, especially people that were trying to get pregnant and kind of resented me for saying that, or even family, like older women that have already gone through the process. Like when you're fresh off postpartum, it's oh. a food awakening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. And I'm big on calling it for what it is. There are amazing parts and there are excruciating parts yeah. and it's okay. Yeah. And that's life. Yeah. And, and I think we are all healthier and we support each other better when we're able to say, yes, I love it. And no, this is not fun at all. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, why can't we speak our truth and talk about what's happening to us and be ashamed of our feelings. And this is a lot of what I have learned for myself and have been telling and teaching women is that it's okay to feel what you feel. That doesn't make you a bad person, but it's your responsibility to figure out why you're feeling that and decide if you want to feel that. Yes. Yes. You're absolutely right. And layering on top of that, what can you do if that feeling keeps coming up? You know, yeah. what are the changes that might need to be made in your life if it keeps coming up and coming up and coming up? Exactly. Yeah. And if it keeps coming up, there is a reason and you really need to figure it out. And lots of people don't want to go through this deep dive in the inner work that I encourage because it's not pleasant, but it's what you need to be able to really reach the root of that and then come to terms with it and move on. And it's, it's important to reach back into your past reach back into not so pleasant times and maybe some trauma, but that's how you heal. And it really is your responsibility, especially as a parent to be able to heal those things so that you can help your kids heal or not even have to go through some of that because you're going to be healed already. Absolutely. Yeah. Generational trauma is a huge thing and mm -hmm. we do pass down wounds and yes. yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather take care of it now and just be done with things. Exactly. Now you and I both work with women. Mm -hmm. We both work with women in creating self-esteem, um, improving their self-image. What I am really enjoying about our conversation and what I'd like to have listeners take away from this is you're kind of now they get on the front end. Yes, you've you know opened it up, but you're kind of using motherhood as this catalyst and it yeah. changes us. And my work is kind of on that 
ending phase. I work with a lot of empty nesters where the motherhood mm. journey is suddenly over and women say, who am I? Mm. If I'm not a mother, who am yeah. I? Yeah. And what I like about us banning both edges of that is it really goes to show how powerful the transition of motherhood is yes. in our lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's the transition. It's like, I don't want to exclude women that don't have kids, don't plan on having kids, can't have kids. But until you are a mom, you cannot possibly understand what happens within you because it's hard even for you that are going through it to understand. So being able to explain it to somebody that is not living it is practically impossible. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So going back to the whole self-esteem, in your words, how do you describe self-esteem and what does healthy self-esteem look like? Yeah. So self-esteem and self-love are very connected for me. And there's one thing that I always like to say in my workshops and in the work that I do is that nobody can create self-esteem for you. Everything that we, we, we say we use self means that you have to do it. And oftentimes we expect other people to create love for ourselves, right? Within us. And we, we depend so much on external validation. And that's pretty much what all we go to is what other people think of us, what other people say about us. And sometimes they're not even thinking those things. And when they say things, they're not even intending it that way. And we are already interpreting it in a certain way. And this goes back to your wounds of the past, right? You put on these lens as you were growing up and you started seeing the world in this way. And maybe it's not that healthy of a way. Mm -hmm. And again, it's your responsibility to pay closer attention to how your relationship with yourself has been developing because we learn how to be women with other women in our lives. And there's not much control that we have when we're little because we're being shaped by our environment. But once we're older, we have this responsibility of looking back and understanding what was I taught to believe about myself? Mm -hmm. And should I really believe in this? Because I don't, I'm not forced to anymore as an adult. I can decide how I feel about myself. So this is really self-esteem is how do you feel about yourself and understanding that it's not accidental, that it's happening, right? right. Even if you're not paying attention, it's happening. Uh, but once you start paying attention, then you can be more intentional with it and decide, I love myself for who I am. And it doesn't matter what other people say. But then another important step of all of this is who are you, right? Yes. Are you what people have been, uh, construing about you. And so you're, you've created this persona to please people because this is what women do best, right? Is just pleasing everybody and forgetting their voice, forgetting who they are, just putting themselves in the back burner um, and understanding that you are somebody. And I always like to go back again to the past and to your little girl when you were a little girl, because especially seeing my kids being born the same day and being completely different at a, such a young age you see that they were born with this essence and I didn't put that in there. They're raised the same and together, but they're very different. And this is what happens to all of us. And with time, we start putting on layers um, of society of responsibilities and we start kind of stuffing that identity and that essence up, you know, and it, again, it's our responsibility to peel all those layers and figure out who that person really is and who you want that person to be as well. Right. Yes. Um, so to me, it's really all about understanding your relationship with yourself and understanding who you are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what are some tips or tricks that you have for listeners to who are thinking, oh, maybe, maybe I want to do this a little bit. Is there something that they can go home and do this afternoon? Yes. So one of my favorite tools and that has really guided my coaching and my personal transformation has been uh, the Enneagram test. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's oh, yeah. a okay, cool. Mm -hmm. It's a personality test. There are nine different types and there are many different personality type uh, tests out there. And I think all of them are fabulous, but the Enneagram has really resonated with me because it really talks about the weaknesses and strengths um, in a way that is very transformative. Um, that it helps you see yourself 
through a lens of self-love mm -hmm. because you can start understanding that there is a healthy and a not so healthy way of you being. So it's not really a matter of you changing who you are. It's really about understanding how you operate and choosing to operate it in a healthy way, in a way that benefits you and the people around you. So that's the very first thing that somebody can go out and do. <laughs> yes. And I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that. I too have taken the test and I love that. And just so listeners kind of understand, I am a two. They categorize okay. it, you know, based on numbers. The two is basically the helper and the peacekeeper. Well, mm -hmm. it's great to be a helper and it's great to be a peacekeeper. <laughs> but like you were saying, it can get unhealthy. If I start sacrificing myself and helping everybody, pretty soon I'm not taking care of myself. Yep. And then I start being resentful. Mm -hmm. And then I'm helping people from this place of obligation. And that's mm -hmm. not so healthy. So I, I really like how you explain that. It, be who you are, but be who you are in a healthy way. Yes, exactly. And for me, I'm a type three. So a type three, and they're kind of connected with the two, obviously, because they're so close, um, is the overachiever or the achiever. And it goes back into what I was saying earlier that I really resonated with. Um, you want to achieve so much and do so much that you end up kind of forgetting who you are. And yeah. you end up putting on the different masks so that you are accepted by people because wanting to achieve more, it's not just for the personal fulfillment, it's for the recognition. And then that goes into the seeking external validation, feeling that emptiness, feeling that void, because if you seek for external validation, it's just a bottomless pit. It's never going to be enough. And that's why you have to learn how to fill yourself up yourself. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, darn it, wouldn't it just be easier to be like, yeah, I'm going to buy some self-esteem today. It's, <laughs> right. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> no, it's a work and it's a journey. And this is what I've been learning, especially because of my personality type. And this is what is so beautiful about the work that I have been doing is that even though I am a type three and not everybody is a type three, I feel like women can resonate with this a lot with the idea of seeking that external validation of doing things and finding your worth in your doings, in your actions and in your accomplishments versus finding your worth in within with you being just who you are, just as I am today, right now, not thinking about the future. And it seems so contradictory that you can be satisfied with who you are and still want more. But what's amazing is that the more grateful you are for your present the more amazing things you will attract in your future. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So here's a question for you on that. I actually gave a speech last May in India that was called wow. reclaiming. Yeah. Reclaiming voice through self-validation. And it was, it was to a conference of over, oh my goodness, 1500 women. It was huge. My goodness. Yes. From all over the world. And that theme seemed to resonate that women everywhere were seeking that external validation um, in different ways, but they yeah. were still doing that. And I was yes. wondering if you saw cultural differences, you know, from growing up in Brazil to being in the U.S. Um, in the way women sought external validation for things. Hmm, that's so interesting. And and, and especially the term self-validation, I love that, of you just doing it to yourself and not expecting it from somebody else. I don't know necessarily that I feel like there is that big of a difference. Maybe um, Brazilian women are a lot more um, aware of like their bodies and because of the dance and the culture, I feel like a lot of the external validation comes with physical appearance, um, not so intellectuality and things like that, which are valued here in the U S because everyone is so goal, goal oriented and achievement oriented, which is probably why I resonate a lot with the, with the culture exactly. <laughs> from my, from my young age. Um, so I feel like that would be the difference, but in general, really, it's just, I think women tend to tend to seek that a lot more than men. I think, I feel like men may, f may, may have an easier time finding that within themselves and just having the pleasure of achieving. Cause I see that a lot in my husband too. Like, it's nice to get recognized. I mean, I'm, don't get me wrong. I oh, always sure. say, I, I always say that that's, that should be the bonus. You know, it's amazing. you embrace it and you love it. Uh, but first and foremost, you just feeling the joy and the fulfillment, the personal fulfillment of achieving that. And I feel like that probably comes a lot easier for most men 
than it does for women. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. Now, what do you say to moms? Because I was a corporate attorney for 10 years before I had my kids and started, you know, doing the female empowerment coaching. And what I found to be difficult was going from being an overachiever, yeah. from being a lawyer who gets awards, get bonuses, has recognition to all of a sudden being at home. And yes, I'm good at validating myself, but by the same token, it's really challenging because you have all of these wins all day, every day. Yay, they're potty trained, but nobody mm. does give you an award. And it's not that you need it, but it's nice to get yeah. it. So I wondered if you had any advice for women who are at home right now and they're thinking, yeah, that's great, but I'm really tired of patting my own self on the back for having snack time go successful. <laughs> Yeah, I can totally relate to that. And I feel like that's where um, being a part of a community of empowered women is so important. And that's the whole premise behind me uh, developing a school, so a virtual school, so that women that have personal development in mind and that want to make that a constant in their lives can connect. Because we have different friends and for different reasons in our lives. And it's not with everybody that you can sit down and say, I don't feel that great today. I'm just feeling like a loser. Like sometimes you can't really have that conversation with your husband because he's not going to understand. If you say that to your mom, she's going to get worried sick. Yeah. Um, and some friends are not really in tune with personal development. They may think it's kind of woo woo or BS, whatever. It's important for you to find friends that can understand this need first understand the need for self-validation so that it's a mutual relationship of we're doing this for ourselves first. And then now we can support each other because it's super important as well in the process of self-validation that you start learning to give out compliments without it being like pulling teeth, depending on your personality type. It may be the easiest thing. You may, you know, find it a lot easier to compliment people than to find beautiful things about yourself. But depending on your personality type, it may be the other way around, right? It may be hard for you to recognize the beauty in other women. And I feel like, especially in this sense, the competition between women, when we talk about between women and between men is tougher. Um, and it, it and this is what this work does is helping you understand that there really is no competition when you truly understand how unique you are. Yes. I think that is hands down because yeah, there are, it's a huge world. <laughs> a yes. lot of us, a lot of us are doing the same kinds of work with on the same problem, but with yeah. different modalities and with different exactly. flavors. And I think the strength is in those subtle differences because, you know, you're talking about you're a mom of some younger kids. Mm -hmm. That's going to resonate with some people. Yes. Some people aren't going to like it. And yeah. that's fine. There's yes. Other people, you know, I'm in the empty nester phase. I use burlesque as my modality. Very much attracts people and it very much repels people. Yes. And that's perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And this is also a, a huge point that I think, I think we should stress here is that the more you understand who you are, the more confident you become in who you are and the more okay you are when people don't like you. Yes. Because it's okay. It's Fine. okay. I, I read somewhere, there's like statistics that say that, uh, for all the people that you leave meet in your life, at least 10% will not like you. Like it's a given. There will be people out there that will think you're stupid or that will have like no respect for you. And it's not really your job to please them. And it goes back to the whole people pleasing. Like you can't please everybody or have everybody approve of your decision. So ultimately you have to approve of your own self and your own decisions and own it. Yes. Yes. I love that. Um, circling back, you'll love this story. And, and I, I want to hear your, you know, okay. take on it for our listeners too. When I was giving my speech in India, there is this huge audience. It's mostly women. Mm. 90, 98% of the women I'd say loved it and were clapping and were cheering and were coming up to me. There was a man in the audience. There were a few men okay. and he came up and he said, self-validation, that your term, what does that mean anyway? Huh? I invest in people and I'm not sure if I would invest in you. Because I'm not sure if that's really clear. And what were you meaning when you were saying this? And he had all of this negative stuff. And I felt something rise up in me at first that wanted to prove to him, mm. you know? And then I caught myself and I thought, I don't need to prove anything to you. 
I'm not asking for funding. I'm not asking to defend what I said. Either you like it or you don't. But I thought it was interesting that my instinct was I'm going to prove it. Mm. And I don't know if you saw that in people or what your take on that was. I'm just curious. Uh, In people, if like their first instinct of having to prove themselves. And again, I feel like that is a lot, has a lot to do with our personality type, our upbringing, uh, the circumstances, right? Um, But it's definitely a hard thing to combat. And one thing, and I love that you admitted that, that you could, that that came first and you were able to curb that because at times we may think, okay, so I need to be perfect, right? There will be a time where I won't ever have negative thoughts anymore. Like that's not it at all. No, (laughs) never. It's not. It's it's about catching yourself. And the faster you catch yourself, especially when you're disappointed, the the faster you pick yourself back up, it's all about kind of like the speed in which things happen because think about it in the past, you didn't even know that that was something negative that you were doing. So you were just doing it blindly. Right. And then you start becoming aware after the fact, dang it, shouldn't have said that, you know, and then it comes to a point where it rises up and you're able to quiet down right away. So depending on your personality type, this may happen or not, but I feel like regardless, there are things that are still going to rise up just just to kind of test you. (laughs) Like, are you there yet? Are you there still? Or are you over this? You know? Yes. Oh, I agree. I agree. Okay. So for listeners who are thinking, oh, that was cool. And Marta, you're totally right on. I want to learn that. And you said you have an online school. Talk a little bit more about the online school and where people can learn a little bit more about you. Yes. So my idea again with the school was that I wasn't just going to do a course, like a self-paced course so you can go through evergreen and all the things I did that. And although lots of ladies loved it, I, I, I felt the need of something constant, like an evolution, and yes. especially because of my background as a teacher, it's been so amazing to, to combine the two things because I was teaching languages for so long. And now I see that in order to learn anything, we have to have confidence. And that's one of the things that I saw with my students in learning languages. They would be like, so amazed. How did, how did you learn to speak so well when you're not from there and you've never lived there? I hadn't le- lived here before. And I was, you know, really good at it. And I really loved right. it. And, and it was all a matter of finding that confidence within myself and pursuing what I wanted. And lots of people lack that. And it's not something that you're going to do a course and it's going to be done for you and it's over. It's a, it's a process, right? It's a learning and a process and it's always in development, always improving. Um, and this is what personal development is. So my idea was instead of doing a course, having a membership where you can be a member and you can, uh, watch the classes weekly. So we have classes on different topics. I, uh, invite guest experts uh, once a month to teach a class. You hear from different people and have different connections. And I also have like a hot seat or Q and A so that you can kind of like office hours. I'll be live and you can come ask questions or just chat with me. So it's kind of an opportunity for a one-on-one if you're the only one that hops in at that particular time. Um, and it's been really, really nice because it's not about just listening uh, and being a student, like a lecture. It's about really participating And I encourage students to be teachers too. So everybody in the school has the opportunity to teach a class. Or maybe if you're not a coach or if you don't have something you can teach on, you can just tell your story. Everybody has an amazing story. And one, when you talk about it, it does something to you. It helps you process all of that in a different way. And this can bless somebody else that may have been in a similar situation or knows of somebody else that is in a similar situation. There's just such power in us sharing our voice. So it's, it's been an amazing thing and it's, yeah. So every week there's different content and you can catch up whenever you want. I love that because life has got many different twists and turns and sometimes we haven't faced something, but as we start moving into that direction, we have that story in our head and we're like, oh, there was a woman and she did this and I know I can too. So Exactly. Yeah. And really developing kind of like analytical skills of throughout life and not just, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to read this book. Once this book is over, nothing changed in my life. Or I'm going to sit here, I'm going to listen to this podcast episode, which is wonderful, but tomorrow I'm going to be down in the dumps again. So it's the idea of creating that throughout your day because it does you no good to do to go to an event and be inspired and then go back to your regular life if you don't know how to keep that up so it's it's super important for you to start 
having practices, but not only just having the daily practices of journaling or whatever it is, but start paying attention. Like what I love the most is even when I'm watching like a reality TV show or whatever it is, start analyzing that in comparison to my life or thinking about lessons that that can be teaching me or how I can use that as a parallel to teach something else. That's what I love. It's finding the intertextuality in everything. Oh, absolutely. And there's so many, there's so much there. There's so many opportunities to do that. So, Mm -hmm. and then what is your website where people can learn more about you? It's just martasburk.com. Perfect. And I will put that in the show notes as well. That way, if any listeners are out there like, ah, I really want this, but I'm running right now and I can't write it down, (laughs) they can do that, (laughs) (laughs) which does happen. Okay. I want to shift a little bit of gears here and have some fun with you. Okay. I, yes, want to take you through the five steps of flaunt. Oh, dear. So listeners, oh, yes, can be easy. So listeners can start seeing you a little bit naked. Mm. Oh, I know. If this is your first time to my show, FLAUNT is an acronym. F stands for find your fetish. L is laugh out loud. AU is accept unconditionally. N is navigate the negative. And T is trust in your truth. And my book and all of my work is based on the concepts of burlesque, which is stripping out of the masks, the costumes, and the layers that we wear to reveal that sparkly essence of who we are underneath. Mm -hmm. And those five steps of flaunt are the tools that will get us there. So Marta, let's start in with F, find your fetish. I describe (laughs) fetish as anything that you are so passionate about anything that you just it lights you up and you want to do and that sometimes as a woman you put off doing because there's dishes and there's laundry and there's carpools what is your fetish I feel like from a young age it's been dressing up it's looking I, I call it glam I'm like glam and that was one of the, one of the things that I, that was hard for me being a stay at home mom with the three kids is that you're less than glam. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and so I, I've always tried to keep that up somehow with like getting my nails done and getting my hair done. But now that they go to school, I'm very, very glad that I can go out, uh, even if it's just meet someone for coffee or go out and work, um, and just dress up. I love my heels. I love my high heels. And I don't think I can ever replace the glam in me with just being like the yoga pants. Like, and that was one of the things with even being an entrepreneur that people are always like, it's amazing. You get to sit in your yoga pants and pajamas all day long. And I'm thinking that's not for me. (laughs) (laughs) No, not at all. And then on an emotional level, how do you feel when you are glammed up? You've got your heels, maybe your boa, your, (laughs) how does that make you feel? I truly feel empowered and confident. And there's something about you knowing what you like and being able to do that because it's different for everybody um, that just makes you feel like you own the room without anybody having to say anything. You know, Uh, I feel like that's, true confidence right there is you looking at yourself in the mirror and being like, dang it, you're hot. (laughs) (laughs) I love that feeling. (laughs) Yes. Yes. The next letter is L laugh out loud. What does the role of humor play in your life? Oh, I feel like fun and humor is everything. And that is one of the things that sometimes I kind of butt heads with my husband about because he's very analytical, he's very practical, and he's a homebody. And it was interesting because a couple weeks ago, my parents were in town and I was visiting with them. We stayed at an Airbnb and my husband wasn't able to go. And then after a couple of days, he messages me and he says, I hate to admit it, but my life is so boring without you. (laughs) You're like, "Uh, duh, of course it is. (laughs) So fun and laughing is everything for me. And that is actually something that I have been having to work on with the Mm -hmm. whole uh, external validation because yes, I take it as a responsibility to make people laugh and feel good, but not everybody wants to laugh and feel good. So sometimes I kind of take it personally, like what is wrong? What did I do wrong that you're not having a good time? (laughs) Right. You you should be loving me. (laughs) Yes, exactly. But I feel like it just, it's everything, right? If you can make yourself laugh even amidst adversity that will help you pull through for sure 
Oh my goodness. Yes. And what do you do when you're in those times when you're exhausted and it's not funny and maybe you've, you know, had fights with your spouse or your parents and everything's just falling apart. What do you do that can help move you back into that state of humor and lightheartedness? I love music. And another thing too is movement. Um, I've been wanting to get back into dancing and I can't wait to be able to go to one of your classes. Um, but uh, that has been a huge part of my life, especially growing up in Brazil too. Oh, and I bet. feel like that is like a foolproof way of changing your mood is if you find the right music that you know is going to lift you up um, and, and exercise too, you know, listening to your favorite playlist, moving around. That's, that's the best way to move. <laughs> yes, the is. Out. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. So then AU, AU is the golden center of flaunt and that is accept unconditionally because there's a lot of things in life and in the world that we can't change. And you know, you mentioned earlier, sometimes women who want to have kids and they can't, they feel that pain point and yeah. they're, they're, yeah, there's that tension between accepting unconditionally where you are now mm -hmm. and then looking at where you want to be and being really real about yeah. what can change and what can't change. Mm -hmm. What was something, and it might take you a moment to think, okay. what was something that was really difficult for you to accept unconditionally about yourself or your circumstance? And how did you make peace with that and move on? So I feel like having triplets was something that now that they're four years old and because of all the inner work that I have been doing, I've been able to realize and even externalize that that was something hard for me to accept because I had so many ideas of how I wanted my life to look like. Oh, and yes. the moment I learned that there were three babies <laughs> inside of me, all of those ideas went out the window, like a hundred percent. My idea of delivery, my idea of breastfeeding routine, career, everything went out the window. And I had to learn again that it's okay to relinquish control. And it's actually a beautiful thing when you, once you understand that you have no control because it forces you to live in the present and to understand that the only thing that you can control is your feelings and the way you feel about circumstances and about yourself. So it was definitely hard. And I believe that this whole process that I have gone through with my coaching has been a way of me finding first recognizing that it was hard for me to accept because it's very easy to stuff that down and just say, Oh my gosh, I've loved my kids since day one, which I have, but right. it's got nothing to do with the resentment of this is not what I had planned for, you know? Yes. And it's okay for me to feel that. And it's okay for me to say that even if people don't agree with it, because it's what I felt and it's okay to feel what you feel, you know? And now I see them as this huge challenge and this huge blessing to force me to be the best version that I am, even more so than if I had just had one kid. Absolutely. Because so often it is our challenges that pushes us to take that next level. And, yes. it's easy to, and I don't want to say it's easy to manage one because it's not, yeah, it's not, <laughs> but, but it's at a different level. You know, just like you were talking about the breastfeeding thing, mm -hmm. we don't have three breasts, right? We just don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yes, there's a way to manage it, but one baby to two breasts is an entirely different story than three babies yeah. to two. And that's, yeah. yeah, it's, it's just a challenge and it's just a next level. Exactly. Which, yeah. Which leads us right into the N, which stands for navigate the negative. Now, <laughs> caveat, I don't really believe anything is negative. I believe mm. everything just is right. Our perceptions. However, we still do perceive things as negative. Yeah. What are some of your tips and tricks and tools for navigating things that you perceive to be negative? Yeah. So I like the idea of perceiving because I feel like that's a really powerful way of you taking kind of analytical stance, taking a step back and separating yourself from situations and really being the observer of your life and your thoughts, understanding that you are not your thoughts and you're not even your feelings either. Right. Uh, cause so many times we are just controlled by life, 
right? Like Tony Robbins says, life is not happening uh, to you. Life is happening for you. But it's all a matter of perception too, right? You're choosing these things and they're coming at you. And then you can decide what you want to do with them. It's all a choice, whether you realize it or not. It's not, nothing is ever accidental, right? There's always a reason for it. And there's something that you can do about it. And it's going to be your choice. So I feel like observing these things and really becoming like a detective of where is this coming from instead of just either stuffing it down or wallowing in it. You, you're choosing that. If you're stuffing it down, that's your choice. If you're wallowing in it, it's your choice. So why not choose to investigate it and really become a detective of you because nobody is in you. <laughs> so no, they can't no. do that for you. I mean, people can prompt you and that's what coaching does. It's with the prompts and it's d helping you dig but at the end of the day, you have to do the work. So I feel like really taking this observer stance is what helps you with the negativity. Mm -hmm. And I like that. And I like how you talked about having a community too, because then that way the community yes. also helped prompt you because it, it is true. We just, with my background in, as a hypnotherapist, everything is habit. We're just habitual beings and we can habitually stuff we can yep. habitually explode yep. or we can habitually self-investigate. So mm -hmm. yeah, I love it. Yes, that. create the habit of self-investigation. I love it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the last um, letter is T and that is for trusting in your truth. Mm. And there's, oh, there's so much we're going to discuss on this one. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. First of all, talk to us about trust and how you feel about trust and the things that you trust in, whether it's yourself, whether it's spirit, trust. Let's just yeah. that trust first. I love that word and it's been something that's been coming up a lot for me in this work because the whole acceptance of yourself and love of yourself has a lot to do with you learning to trust yourself versus trusting everybody's opinion. And this is something that I have noticed in my life. And I feel like women in general, again, oh, is yeah, that yeah. before you make a decision, you text all of your friends, you post it on the group on uh, Facebook, um, you go search for Google, you go read in magazines, whatever. You are the last person you consult, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's because right. And that's true. Because you're wanting to please people. So if so-and-so tells me this is what I should do, if I do it, they're going to be happy with me, right? So that's kind of like the, uh, the logic behind it. But at the end of the day, if you're pleasing so-and-so, maybe you're not pleasing the other person. And then you're just caught in the middle of this mess because it's never going to be good enough for anybody. Well, once you actually take the time to do that self-investigation and you understand what you really want and you're okay with following your own gut, and, and it's not that you can't check in with other people that you do trust, right? right. But they shouldn't be the first person uh, that you resort to. You should be that person. And, and the, the fact that you are not that person really says a lot that you are not really loving yourself, trusting yourself, accepting yourself because you're still seeking that external validation. So that has been huge for me because of my personality type of wanting that external validation is to understand that I already have all the answers inside of me because I am the only me that there is. So yeah. I, I should be able to ask myself and to be quiet enough to listen for the answer and to trust that that is what I should follow. Absolutely. And I want to follow up on this because I'm curious if you've had that same thing. Mm. I think a lot of it also for me is I don't want to own it if I'm wrong. Mm. And it's so easy to consult with other people. So then you can follow in into that, you know, mindset That's of like, <laughs> oh, well, I did what I was supposed to do and it didn't work out. Well, that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And that was something I had to get over early on as an attorney. If I make a call, I have to trust that I make the call. And if I make it right, that's great. And if I make it wrong, that's also great. Yeah. Because we make mistakes. And that's yes. Like and that's how you learn too, because you don't really learn by blaming on other people, like blaming other people for your stuff. And, and this is another part of this whole thing of ownership and taking responsibility for your life, taking responsibility for your thoughts is that once you start doing that, you can't blame people either. You can't find that external validation 
and please the other person, but you can't blame them either because it's you and you, and you start getting comfortable with that too, because it's like, it's not really that much of a failure. It's just, it was, I like to see it as a stepping stone. I did it. I did it this way because I wouldn't have done it any other way. That was my choice. It had to be that way. Otherwise I would have chosen something else. That was the only thing I could do at the time. So now I learned from this experience, use it as a stepping stone to do it differently next time, or to just create something else based on my experience. Right. Exactly. And you've got younger kids right now too. Think about all of the things that they're learning. And for listeners who do or don't have kids, you've probably all been around kids at one point. Yeah. They learn. They say funny words. They potty in their pants. Yes. They spill their milk. They Mm -hmm. trip. They don't know how how to walk. They try and they fail and they try and it's all okay. And they fail and they fail and it's still okay. Exactly. And this is a huge part of what I do too, going back to looking at your little girl is understanding that even if you already walk, you're already potty trained and you already know how to do all these basic things that babies don't know, you're still learning certain things. And for me, it was, I'm still learning to be a mom. I don't know all the things. There is no textbook. Um, and I just learn on the job and this is life is learning on the job. So it's okay if you make mistakes because you make mistakes when you were riding a bike, learning to ride a bike, when you were learning to walk and you shouldn't be, uh, made to feel ashamed of that because it's just part of the process. Exactly. Exactly. So that was the trust. Now I want to move into the truth. Mm. Who is the truth of Marta? Who is Marta inside stripped down? We've got the burlesque music going. You're taking <laughs> off the bow, the makeup, the, the, the heels, the core. Who are you not as your role, not in relationship to other people, not as a coach? Just who are you with nothing else on? Oh, that's tricky. But the yeah. thing that came, the thing that came to mind to me was light. Uh, this is really what I believe that we all have been made or been brought into this world to bring something and to bring our light and our individuality to touch other people. And this is what I have been wanting to do, especially with the humor, with the laughing, with the motivation, uh, with uh, the sexiness is really bringing light to other people so that they can start seeing their own light as well, right? If they're living in that darkness, if they're um, not really knowing how they can contribute to the world or be of some value, I feel like the more light we have around us, the easier it will be for us to see our own light. And this is what I really want to bring to anyone that comes across me. (laughs) I love that. That's beautiful. And what I like about that is, you know, hearing you say about the 10% of the people that don't like any of us. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Hearing you say about some of the people who are like, how dare you say that when you're light, it doesn't matter because none of that stuff can stick on you. You just shine bright. You just are. Yeah. (laughs) You just are. I love that. Mm -hmm. So where do you want to go from here? You're doing amazing work with, you know, women, you've got the empowered woman podcast, you've got the self-improvement school, you're doing workshops. Where are you going from here to continue spreading your own light? So I really, um, see myself doing bigger events and having more women participating in this. And a big thing of what I am want to do and what I have been doing is that I don't want to just be the front runner of the entire thing and be like the God that people just worship me and think I'm amazing. I want it to be so that people can feel like I'm accessible and can feel my humanity in seeing that I have flaws, that I have things that I'm still working on. And that's okay because everybody is still working on something. And I want to bring other women that have been working on themselves, um, to be able to do the same thing, to showcase their business and their story, which is what I'm doing with the school, but on a bigger scale um, and in person because the energy in person is different. So I do see myself uh, doing bigger events and across the country as well and in other uh, countries as well, in Brazil and wherever else, um, to really bring this message of self-love for women and also of sisterhood, of womanhood, right? Of us supporting each other because the more you believe and you love yourself, the more you're going to believe and love other women too, because you're going to see them as your equal as in their unique uniqueness. So that's the beautiful thing. We're all the same. 
but we're different. So it's yeah. finding that community and that beauty and understanding that, that nothing can, uh, nothing bad can come out of love, loving yourself and loving others. Mm-hmm. I love that. That sisterhood piece is so important. Yes. So important. And I feel like when I was in the corporate world, there was so much competition and you know, part of my why, part of the reason that I left and that I started doing this was that similar. I thought women, we cannot compete against each other. Yeah. There is a glass ceiling and we can't break through it mm-hmm. one at a time by tromping on other people. So that yeah. sisterhood pe- piece is huge. Congratulations for that. Thank you. And that has been huge for me too. That is part of my growth because being the people pleaser and being wanting to be the center of attention all the time, it was hard for me to see the beauty in other women. Like I was saying, for some people it comes easier for me, not so much because it was always so much about the competition. I want to stand out. So if I have to kind of stuff you down, I will. Right. <laughs> and so right. with, with my work now, it's been about, I need you so that I can grow and you need me too, because we complement each other. It's not really a race. It's a race of our old selves or our unhealthy selves versus our healthy selves. And that's it. Yes. I love that. And again, thank you for sharing that, you know, and just for saying that, because that is, you know, I, I talk about sharing your shadow, you have to share your shadow. And then other women can say, I've been jealous and I've been, you know, and thank you for sharing that. Now I can share that about myself and help me figure out how to get over this. Exactly. And it goes back to what you said about uh, w- what you felt when that man w- went against you and you felt the need to um, prove something to them. And this can happen with, with friends. Maybe you start getting a little jealous and you're like, dang it, I thought I was past this, but it's okay. It's just a matter of how fast you catch it and asking yourself, where is this coming from? Why am I envying her? You know, so it's, it's so important to become more aware of your feelings and being able to combat that and change routes. <laughs> yes. Oh, absolutely. And I also think that this has come up for me before and for some of the women that I've worked with, and I'm curious if you've had a similar situation where sometimes somebody does become envious or jealous, or they want to do something that somebody else is doing. Mm-hmm. And once they start doing it, they realize that's not my path anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. And this is what I, I've seen a lot uh, in growing my business and kind of shifting directions when I first started out um, is you start following these people, these big shots, right? And you start wanting to copy what they do. And they even have courses and masterminds of telling you exactly what they did. And for some people, it works for some time. And for others, it never works. And it's just so frustrating. But that's because you can't really copy what somebody else does. I feel like it's good for you to get started to right. see like, you know, find your groove. But at the end of the day, everyone is so different and there's no way you can replicate somebody else's life or calling. There's just no. impossible. No, exactly. Exactly. Well, I just want to offer you from the bottom of my heart, from my, you know, your, your light. I, I, my soul is just sparkle. Aww. I'm just- Oh, I love it. (laughs) From my sparkly self to your light self, I just want to offer you gratitude and recognition for doing what you're doing in this community of sisters, of women, of mothers, of humans. And we happen to be in the same state, which I just love. Yes. It's it's a worldwide thing. And yes, whether it's Brazil or India or Europe or you know, wherever. Yeah. Keep spreading that light. Thank, Thank you, for you. Doing this work. I really appreciate it. Oh, I appreciate you too. Yo, good. And to close out the show, I was curious if you have one gold nugget of wisdom that you would like the listeners to go away with today. So one thing that I have been saying a lot lately, because it's a moment that I've been going through, uh, and it goes along with everything that we just said, is people will disappoint you. Will and caps. People yes. will disappoint you. <laughs> yes. Love them anyway. <laughs> and the same goes for you. You will disappoint yourself. Love, love yourself anyway. It's okay. Oh, that's beautiful. I love that. Yay. <laughs> Listeners, I hope you got as much out of Marta as I did. Um, check her out. If you, again, like I said, are running or driving or chasing down a baby or doing something like that, reach out to me and I'm happy to forward you, um, forward on her information to you. Have an amazing week. Go deep.
deep, 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 look within, start acknowledging who you really are, both the good and the bad. Start looking deep within and just seeing if there is something that you would like to shift. If there's a different way to respond, a different way to feel, realize that it is the relationship between you and you, as Marta so beautifully put that. Have an amazing week. And as usual, get out there and flaunt. Tune in next time to Flaunt. Build your dreams, live your sparkle with radio host Laura Cheadle every Wednesday at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time on syndicated Dream Vision 7 Radio Network. Come release self judgment, reveal your naked self worth, and re choreograph a life filled with joy. Flaunt. Find your fetish, laugh out loud, accept unconditionally, navigate the negative, and trust in your truth. Find out more at laurachedle.com. That's L O R A C H E A D L E.com. 